the program has not, uh, we feel, provided what we would say quality drug abuse treatment services to the clients that they've been serving. Also, we feel that their relationships in the immediate community of Council Bluffs have been very poor with relationship to other agencies, such as the courts uh, and the other human service agencies in the Council Bluffs area. Uh, they also have had a very, what we feel, uh, uh, mismanaged program in that the, the resources that they have and the, the uh, mechanisms by which they use to, to deal with clients uh, and their staff uh, have been uh, a lot less than desirable. I think they understand what we're trying to do. I think it's very simple. You have a grassroots agency, you have the people in southwest Iowa doing something. And it is not controlled but in the minds. And I think the Iowa Drug Abuse Authority wants to control it. And uh, the people of southwest Iowa do not want to be controlled. All we want is help and assistance. So it gets to be kind of a bureaucratic argument. Very much so. It's very politically based and uh, unfortunately we're not politicians. We're people that know our business and that's treatment and the help or the person that has drug problems. Total Awareness plan to continue their battle for state and federal funding, even if it means going to court. And the Iowa Drug Abuse Authority has already taken steps to fund another local agency in southwest Iowa. Many lawmakers at the state capitol are concerned that more bureaucratic infights between local and state agencies over federal and state spending may be coming up before the end of the session. From the Iowa State House, this is Don Keeler reporting. Do you see a greater uh, increase in grain reserves or expanded program? Well, I think the real challenge in this area is to devise a uh, reserve program that adequately protects the farmer against uh, depressant dumping of reserves, which has been the unfortunate history under the CCC program. This has constituted really an overhang on the market. But if we're going to uh, bring about stability, not just in this country in terms of uh, agricultural production and consumer price, but uh, internationally, it seems to me that we have to devise some sort of mechanism that on the one hand brings about that stability, but on the other guards against the very real and genuine fear and concern the farmer has that he is going to be subjected to this type of governmental manipulation the minute he starts to see a decent price. So I certainly couldn't support a program that doesn't provide adequately uh, against that very real concern based on the history of the program operation in the past.
No, I don't think. I think the way we're paying enough taxes now that I don't think I could afford any more. How about you, Sue? I have to agree with that. Taxes. <laughs> I think we'd be spending too, mu too, mu too much more taxes. I if, think that, I think that's enough money for them now. If they would take a standard of living increase comparable to what, uh, let's say, teachers or other employed people are asking, it might be, you know, permissible in that sense. But on the other hand, I think if somebody's going to hold the line, maybe it's these people that should do it. I think everybody in the state should stay with the same salary for this next year and maybe we'd get some of this depression settled. Because I don't know how else we're going to do it. Well, I believe in a cost of living increase, but that's just about it. I don't believe in any increase any more than that, a percentage which would be equivalent to the cost of living increase. There's a few people around here that uh, haven't got jobs, and uh, a lot of them in Des Moines are giving part of their salary to help. And I think he should uh, try and do a little bit more without having a pay increase. Most of the people we talk to don't begrudge the governor or anybody else for that matter from getting a substantial salary increase. That is, that there's money enough to go around, not only for the state officials, but for other employed and unemployed people in Iowa. From Lincoln Center in Ames, this is Don Keeler reporting. will retain my home base in Iowa. In terms of your Many of President Ford's recommended funding cuts would affect health, education, and research programs. At Iowa State, this could have drastic effects on the veterinary medicine program.
Roxanne, if you do become the head of the National Women's Political Caucus, what will you work for? Well, the top priority is, of course, ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment. There are only four more states to go, and I would hope that not very much of my term as, as chair would be taken up with that particular thing, because there are so many other things that are important. Child care legislation pending before Congress, uh, many plans to reform our, our archaic and, and really unjust welfare system, plans for educational equity, uh, numerous bills pending to, to redraft and, uh, and uh, make more equal the Social Security system. All of those things are terribly important to the women of this nation and to the women of Iowa. How far would you like to go? Would you like to be, let's say, the Attorney General of the nation? Everybody else has been. <laughs> I don't know what my political aspirations are. Politics is a very fluid environment in which to live, and I've not, I've not committed myself to any particular either elective or appointive position.